This week, we are going to start with functions and then we will describe algebraic structures. And to be able to do that, we will first talk about the concept of a binary operation. And then based on this, combining this with sets, we will describe the basic algebraic structures such as groups, rings, and fields. And I will show um, an application of uh, these structures in algebraic coding theory, but it will be very brief. And then we will talk about more uh, involved structures such as vector spaces and also lattices, which will also tie into the concept of a partial ordered set, which we discussed last week. And finally, we will discuss Boolean algebras. Okay, um, what is a function? Um, I'm sure all of you who are watching this know what a function is, at least in a general sense, but here's the rigorous definition. Essentially, a function f is a relation from set A to set B such that for every x in set A, there is a unique image in set B. Okay, so the definition, as you see, uses the concept of relations. A function essentially is a special relation. Okay, we have the, the, uh, defined relations as any subset of a Cartesian product. And a function is a special kind of relation where um, for all elements in, in set A, there is some element in B that they are related not only that and that element in b is unique okay so every element in set a is related to one and only one exactly one element in set b so we we simply write this as f of x is equal to y this is the standard notation we use and here the sets a and b are named as the domain of the function and the codomain of the function. And this is the notation we use to denote a function from set A to set B. Well, when we regard a functions as relations in the zero one matrix representation of a function, each row should have one and exactly one, one. Okay, so this means every element is going to be related to exactly one element in the codomain. Uh, or in the d-graph representation, each vertex in the domain should have exactly one outgoing edge towards the codomain. Um, and there are the concepts of range or image. Uh, these are sometimes confused with codomain. Range or image are actually subsets of the codomain, and they include all elements that are uh, mapped to some element by this function. Okay, so the, the, the notation is uh, here. The function applied to, let's say, the set A in, in, an, in an abstract way, meaning that every element in A uh, is related to some element in, in the image. And uh, the, the, the image or the range is essentially the set of all elements in the codomain such that at least one element in the domain is mapped to those elements. And of course, we can define composite functions because we've, we define functions as relations and the composite definition, definition, definition of composition stays the same uh, when it comes to functions. This is um, F composed with a G and, uh, but we usually, of course, use this uh, notation to, to use composition in the context of functions. Now, next we are going to talk about types of functions. And the first one here is injective functions or one-to-one -one functions function from a to b a function f from a to b is an injection if all elements in the domain a map to different values in the codomain b which means um, you can define this in two ways either if the 
images of two elements x1 and x2 in the domain are the same, this should mean x1 and x2 are indeed the same elements in A or in the domain. Or alternatively, you can express this as if x1 and x2 are different elements in the domain, then their images in the codomain B should be distinct, should be different, okay? The next type of uh, functions we are going to talk about are surjections. And these are called surjective functions or onto functions. A function f from a to b is said to be an onto function if all elements in the codomain set b are mapped to by at least one element of the domain. So this means no element in the codomain is left out. Or alternatively, you can say that the image or the range of this function is in fact equal to the codomain. And we can express this as for all y in the codomain B, there exists at least one x in the domain A such that f of x maps to y. A function that is both injective and also surjective, that means it's one-to-one -one and at the same time onto. Such functions are called bijections. Okay, one to one and onto. A bijection whose domain and codomain are the same is called a permutation. So a permutation in this sense means you have a set, let's say A, that's the domain, that's also the codomain. So you just swap around the order so that every element is potentially mapped to some other element in, in a different uh, order, let's say. Uh, so to summarize these types of functions, uh, maybe drawing pictures is quite helpful. So let's say this is the domain and let's say this is the codomain. If for every element in the domain, these map to different elements, then we say this function is one-to-one. -one. If you have, for instance, um, let's say another element here, this maps to, let's say, the same element here, then this function is no longer one-to-one, -one. okay? Or when we look at onto functions, let's say this is your domain, this is your codomain, and Here, well, mapping to the same element is allowed, but what is not allowed is something missing here. Okay, if, the, if, if some element is uh, not mapped to by any element in the domain, this function cannot be an onto function. For, for this function to be onto, for this function to be surjective, then every element in uh, the code domain must be matched to one element, at least one element in, in, the, in the domain. And of course, if a function has both of these uh, properties, if it is one-to-one -one and at the same time it is onto, which means, of course, since this is a function, every element in the domain must match to one element in the codomain. And therefore, there is no elements in the domain left out. Uh, but if they are mapped to all distinct elements in the codomain, and not only this, but also no element is also left out in the codomain, then we call this a bijection. So something like this. You have the domain, you have the codomain. This is mapped to this. Let's say this is mapped to this one. This is mapped to this one. Some different element. And this is mapped to this one. Okay? So every element is mapped to a distinct element. And no element in the codomain is left out. This is what we call a bijection. If this is on one single set, meaning the domain and the codomain is the same set, then we call this a permutation. And usually we denote permutations using this notation. For instance, let's say you have four elements in your uh, 
uh, set a b c d let's say your function maps a to c b to a uh, c to d and d what is missing what b is missing so b should be here you see every element is mapped to a different element and no element in the code domain is left out so this is a different ordering of of the set which we call a permutation this also tells us that uh, the the number of elements in two sets must be the same when uh, you can define a bijection between the two okay so we will come back to this when we talk about cardinalities of sets this will be quite significant and the inverse of a function, well, we, we talked about inverses of uh, relations in the context of relations. So we can define the inverses of relations in the same way, in the inverses of functions in the same way. So if you, if you view a function as a relation, you can always obtain its inverse function, but it will in general be a relation. There is no guarantee that uh, it's a function. Okay, because the requirement for a relation to be a function is that every element in the domain is mapped to exactly one element in the code domain. Okay, so no, not zero and uh, not multiple, exactly one. Okay, so for instance, um, if you have, let's say, two elements mapping to the same element in the code domain in your original function f, let's say, when you invert this, you see in the inverse relation, this element will be mapping to two distinct elements, which means this cannot be a function. It's a relation. It's the inverse relation of the original function, but it's no longer a function. Okay. So the inverse of a function exists. In this context, we say exists, but what we mean by that is it's also a function. Because as a relation, the inverse always exists. But when we say it, the, the inverse of a function exists, we usually mean that it is also a function, not only a relation, it's also a function. And this is possible only when, if and only if, the function is a bijection. Okay, so the relationship between two uh, elements, in one in the domain and the other in the codomain, is just specific to those two. No other element is mapped to that element in the codomain, and uh, every element in the domain is mapped to a different element in the codomain, so that when you invert the relation, what you obtain is still a function. 